But um, what is a great investment? Just to recap, you know, we've already gone over investor A who is flipping a house, investor B, because everybody needs three rental properties. And now we're going to say that at the bare minimum, everyone can be investor C. And, you know, the, the, the way to maximize being investor C is to move into a house below your means, below what you can afford, because when you are qualifying for a mortgage for your next house, then you're only going to get to use, um, that, do y'all, do you know, does somebody know how much it is? I think it's 75%, right? 75% of the rental income on your lease as far as qualifying for your next mortgage. So um, the point, of course, is just that every property and every opportunity is not um, a great investment for investor A, B, or C. And let's just remember that we can fluctuate between being um, investor A, B, and C as well at different points in our life when we're trying to accomplish different goals. So investor C is move in and then rent it and you get another house, and that is how you're going to get three rentals um, in the next two years. If you're married with children, you're excused, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but um, but stay tuned um, for children and grandchildren because you definitely want, you know, to be able to pass on this information and your clients. You know, I, I mean, all of this is just it's time to take the challenge. You know, it's not too late. If you're single with no child obligations, um, this segment is for you. Um, no excuses. <laughs> if you're a single parent, then you're me and you've got this. Um, this is the way that you can change your family's future and, and just not be um, over a barrel or obligated or fearful you know, about what's going to happen to your kids under different circumstances, which I know a lot of single parents go through that. And this is just a, a lot of security in the background. And you're also showing them um, how to prepare for their future. I mean, that that's my favorite thing about a house. Y'all, when we lose money in the stock market, you know, I mean, it just goes down and the, mon the money's just gone, right? When Lori in my CD in the bank, went to 17 cents a month from, you know, $280 or whatever it was. And then you try to take it out. They take $6,000. The greatest thing about a house is I don't care what the price is. Nobody can take it from you as long as we're paying the mortgage. And, and, you know, uh, the good news is think about like when you pay the house off. Okay. When you pay this house off, then I mean, just think about what's going to happen as far as you getting $2,500, $3,000 a month, just free and clear. If you've got three houses, you're getting $9,000 a month and you're still getting to write off the depreciation. And you might say, well, depreciation is only 27 and a half years. It's going to take 30 years to pay it off. Y'all, nobody on this call tell me that. Because you know what that means? It means we're not using our money wisely, okay? Because when we get a big fat commission check, then send it and pay off the one that, that has the worst interest rate, pay that one off first. The, 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 the goal is to pay them off if you're not going to buy more of them. And um, move three to four times over the next two to three years to set up your future. Everyone's invited. It's inconvenient. But five years from now, 10 years from now, when, when this is what's putting your kids through college or it, and it pays off your own personal mortgage, just know, you know, this, this has all been for you because y'all, I mean, the stories that we are telling, and I know we're all full of humility at Solid Source, which I love that about us, but y'all, these are our stories. These other people that are talking about this, this is our story. We are living debt-free with no mortgage, and this is how we did it. There's nothing for us to gain by sharing this except helping you. You know what I mean? And that's why I'm always so grateful for Solid Source agents because everyone's so open and kind about sharing how they've been successful doing different things. But it's like this, this will make that difference. So it's, you know, we said this earlier, but why move three or four times over the next two to three years? Because of the primary residence loan 5% down. And remember of the 5% down, you're getting 3% back. So, and, you know, when you're about to move, okay, remember you can go ahead and get a tenant lined up to, to move in, right? And so 
So when you're about to move into the other house, if you close on that other house instead of closing on the 30th, you know, you could close on the 15th, have your tenant move in on the 16th. When you're moving over here, your first mortgage payment is not going to be due for 45 days, you, you know, because it's in arrears. So your first mortgage payment is not going to be due for 45 days. That means you're going to be getting 45 days of rent before your mortgage payment is even due. Okay. But you see, do you see what that means, right? Is that now instead of only getting 3% of the 5% down payment that you put in, you're probably over four, you know, because you got 45 days of rent before you had to pay a mortgage. Does that make sense? So hot tips to minimize stress. Um, if you're going to take this challenge is, um, it gets some really cool art. Um, I am a huge home goods fan, you know, for, for art, y'all. I mean, they've got awesome art for $39.99. And I mean, they've got big, nice pictures that are framed and certainly do not look like they were less than $100. But, but you know, people feel when they come in your house, even though, of course, you're not leaving the art there with them. But, you know, art is a really easy way to stage a house. And you take it with you, you know, or bring it back, you know, like I did, if your house is not renting or selling, um, you know, only if you know that you're going to take this challenge and you're going to move two or three times, then unpack clothes for you and your family or, or just you for only one or two seasons. Don't unpack all your stuff knowing that you're only going to be there for less than a year, probably before you get something else. Um, you know, keep everything that's memorabilia and all that stuff. Just keep it packed. You know, just keep it packed. Shut off one of the rooms or whatever in there. And that way, when you just keep moving, then, it, you know, you're not having to go through all that hassle and headache every time. And you've just got to commit to say, I'm going to have a detached mental attitude to three hooks. You know, I am buying these homes to secure my future. That's what it is. I am not going to get mentally attached and I am not going to paint the bedroom purple and, and because that's my favorite color. And I always want my bedroom purple, but I would not paint any of those three homes bedroom purple because I will not be living there. <laughs> and, and then we just have to maintain focus on the finish line. And, it, you know, when you think about it would only take three years to do this. And y'all, we just looked at how little money that this is actually taking. If you apply what you're getting back in your taxes as well from the depreciation, and, and I'm not even saying to look at the appreciation because the appreciation doesn't matter because we're not selling, right? I mean, anytime soon. And so, and I'm not saying you can never sell it. I'm just saying, you know, because sometimes something just jumps up and you just have to go, you know, while it's good, but you need to buy something else. Okay. So uh, can we talk about one thing about this? Because what if somebody on this call says, well, um, I am an exception to this um, saying that everyone can do it. I can't do it because I just got my real estate license and I have not made enough commission to um, to secure a loan at, um, at to, to get a mortgage and I am single so I don't have any joint income to claim okay so so all of those reasons because you don't qualify for a mortgage well guess what mortgage you do qualify for you you definitely qualify for an eight percent mortgage do you know why because that's what hard money lenders charge. I don't care. You still need to do it. Okay. Y'all, it is still worth it to get these three houses and then get out there and get commission and refinance it to our beautiful, you know, 3%, which I still can't even believe it stayed that way this long. 8% is not a bad rate. It, it, it does not disqualify you from this. It does not disqualify you. You're just having to pay more while you build your credit. Well, what better way to build your credit than a mortgage? Y'all, you know, I'm about to come up and ask you, you know, hey, does anybody have a legit reason that you can't get involved? <laughs> Everybody's going to be like, no, I do not. <laughs> Choosing interest rate and closing costs as an investor. Um, Y'all, I just like to throw this in there. Yield spread premium. Does everybody know about yield spread premium? 
Okay, yield spread premium. Um, let's just say, for example, that Bank of America, okay, Bank of America, and they were offering to a broker three and a half percent. Okay, here's the thing. The broker is either going to offer you three and a half percent with loan origination, credit report fees, all these fees, 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 fees. Okay. So, you know, which is fine. I mean, I mean that we want them to, you know, eat indoors and, and drive cars. It's just that, you know, they, that's why people have origination fees as, as lender fees on their um, closing cost because that lender is saying that that is the base rate. But did you know that you can ask a lender, hey, what would my rate be? So I wrote the question so that you could just remember it and make it a part of what you do all the time. Because y'all, this is a great suggestion whether you're whether it's an investor loan or just a primary residence loan or any loan um, for your regular clients or investor or yourself. The question is, what is the interest rate with zero closing cost? What if you're only planning on keeping this house? Okay, for example, like the Walmart story. Okay, so so is, so when I bought those three houses in Woodstock, then the, the thing is, but Walmart was going to be built within 11 months. So if, if I'm going to own a house for less than three years, because, you know, I think that the big push up was, you know, in price would happen when all the people were moving in to take the jobs. And then I think, it, you know, then my, my speculation was that it could even out. So, so I was planning to keep the house for less than three years. So would I be better off paying $2,000 in closing costs at three and a half percent or the lender making my rate 4% with zero closing costs? 4%. It's four percent, but because do you see how the the break even would be? Is you would just divide the difference between what I would pay for four percent for the total loan amount, and what the difference is for paying three and a half percent for the three years for my loan amount, and then see if you know see what the break even of two thousand dollars is. You know what what the difference when it equals two thousand dollars, but I mean it would definitely be more than three years. So it would behoove me to just pay a higher interest rate. So just keeping that in mind, you know, especially as an investor and when you're helping other folks. Um, but, it, you know, it is it is just so it's just yield spread premium. I do want to tell you all when you look that up. So there was a big thing about yield spread premium with, um, back in the last recession, uh, just because of all the subprime lending. And so some people think that yield spread premium, that they don't even have yield spread premium anymore. But they do. Uh, they do have yields for a premium. You just have to show what they did. So all of it, you used to not have to disclose it on the on the closing disclosure. And now you do. So it'll say yield spread premium on there. And then you have to show um, the lender has to show why, you know, why it was being charged that way. These are just some self-evaluation questions, you know, uh, and to start to close our time together is, you know, what are your plans? You know, it's so easy today just to just to say, gosh, retirement is so long away or, well, I don't want to retire because I love to work. You know what? We're not, this is not about retirement and being bored and letting our mind go to jello. It's about not having to work. It, it, it's, a, it's, it's about not having to, you know, it, it's about being set up. And, and these are other reasons, you know, certainly the word fear, you know, um, I mean, it can just creep in and say, oh my gosh, I had the worst um, horror story that one of my clients told me about a tenant. And then all of a sudden that gets stuck in your head and you can't get it out. And then everybody on here is going to be um, able to retire except you because of that one story. You know what I mean? So sometimes you just have to move past it and you can still be investor three and move in and just see what happens. Um I know I'm a problem solver. So how do you rank your fear one to 10? I can read <laughs> and to find answers about issues that come up, I'm good. Or thinking of covering the mortgage if a tenant leaves or spending $3,500 to turnkey when a tenant leaves makes me hyperventilate. You know, like where do you fall between in your fear factor and how can you move past it? Because, you know, some people might say right now, 
well, I definitely don't want to do this because the last thing I want to do is go to a house because, you know, these are people that I don't know. And what if something bad happens? Well, I hate to tell you this. What if something bad happens from you going from the grocery store in Publix to your car? Okay. And it, it's just, you know, bad things can happen all the time. We're talking about a way to retirement over here. Um, truth and reminder, right? That real estate is not a get rich quick scheme. And, you know, we just have to think about, are you okay being a landlord? And are you willing to say, hey, I'm going to make the necessary thought process changes to accommodate my retirement plan, you know? And, and just so you know, you know, that is the reason that I started investing in real estate is um, there were two people in my company in medical sales that they informed them because they oversold a, a product. And when I say oversold, I mean, they just sold it but they capped their commission. But do you know when they told them that they capped their commission? In February, after they had already sold it for the year before. So basically that meant that the company got paid 100%, but the agents were capped from their commission. You know what that made me think about? And, and, and I mean, it was, you know, I mean, I will always be grateful for my, you know, being at that company and the training and my time there, but they don't care about retirement. Uh, I, I mean, the, that corporation, these two people, by the way, have been in top 10 the whole time. One had been there 15 years. One had been there 13 years. And you know what they thought? They thought, it doesn't matter if we do this. They're not going to leave. You know, they, they're, they're just, they're not going to leave. And it's just, you know, what this is doing is it's just giving you a backup plan so that no corporation or even, you know, spouse or ex-spouse or your kids, or, I mean, just that, that you're not having to rely on someone else to retire, you know, and, and if you get something else like a government pension and if social security is still around, you know, when we get to collect hours, then yay us. But, it, you know, this can only help us get into that really good space where we are um, able to just feel peaceful you know, about what's going to happen in the future. Um, how much, and, and here's another thing too, let's, let's revert back to inflation. And when we think about inflation, you know, what else do we really have? Because Social Security is certainly not going to keep up with inflation. So, I mean, what else, what, what kind of investments will keep up with inflation like rental property? You know, I mean, there's just not, there's not much. Um, how much money do you have to invest? You know, when you're thinking about, are you ready? And then also, you know, the question just to go back to it is how much work will you do yourself? And, and that is one of my favorite reasons to be investor C is when I move, and that's what I did do as well, but it's just, you know, when you live there, I mean, y'all, there's all kinds of time you know, to, to tile the floors and paint the bathrooms and, you know, tile the cabinets because you live there. So if you wake up instead of, you know, binging on a Netflix series, then tile your countertop. I mean, just, you know, it just makes it a lot easier. And so, um, and if you say, you know, Michelle, I'm not really handy. Then what I say is, but, but do you have YouTube on your available on your phone? Well, then you don't have to be handy. You can watch it and do what they did <laughs> just right in front of you. And then just push rewind and watch it again so that you can do it. Because there's, we're talking about sheetrock, nails, hammers, tile, grout. I mean, y'all, it's just not a lot of stuff. I mean, we're not building a house from the ground up. Um, do you want to be a landlord? And that's what someone else was talking about, property management. You know, because property management is a backup plan. Just by the way, property managers usually charge one month's rent. That's usually what they charge. And then they upcharge any service calls. Um, what cities are you interested in? You know, where I would start is around your city. You know, unless you don't like it there and you think you're going to move or something. Just because you're already familiar with it and you live close to it. And it makes it really easy to meet potential tenants coming over or anything. Um, and... You already know, like if there's something going on that is uh, that land is being cleared. I, I bet you all of us, you know, next time we get in the car and go somewhere and we see that, we'll, we'll be like, oh, wow, I wonder what that is. Because what if it's a great opportunity to buy two houses right there? 
Um, is rental overage important? And I know that sounds like a silly question, but remember y'all, a lot of people do not want rental overage because they are not trying to make more money. They are trying to get houses paid off. They, they are looking for the appreciation in the houses and they feel fortunate even if the rent um, breaks even. With, because I can tell you all, a lot of times when I bought, bought houses, um, my rent that I received did not meet, you know, what the mortgage was. But the rent, including depreciation, did. Because remember how we said it's hard to get a high appreciation, like a quick appreciating property and paying low down payment with um, cash flow that breaks even? It's hard to get both. So when I bought properties in a place like a place in Tempe, Arizona, um, it was landlocked like Buckhead, you know, like it, it was landlocked. So they couldn't put new things in. OK, y'all, if you if you know of an area that's landlocked, ding, 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 ding. I mean, <laughs> because everything that's there is all that's going to be there. So so I bought like four houses in Tempe and it was near the university. So I knew that would be a good rental. But. I knew that because I had just moved from Buckhead, you know, and the whole landlock conversation was had come up. So, so that's why I bought those. But I just felt fortunate to break even, and then all of a sudden, two years later, I was getting four hundred and fifty dollars rental overage from those. So, just because you're not getting it as soon as you first get there, maybe it's for a different reason because you see quick appreciation coming, and then all of a sudden it does get in there. Um, need to lower your tax bracket, you know, and and here's the other part of that, y'all. A lot of people don't need to lower their tax bracket. <laughs> I, I mean, they're not even trying to, to lower their tax bracket. So, um, you know, but then some people are, well, both both people need um, rentals. This is um, Genesis referrals. So if you've never had um, rental property before, Genesis referrals is a sister company to Solid Source. And, you know, what we do is we hold tenant security deposits in it because at it, you can't hold the the um, trust funds. And so we put it in. So if you just go to genesisreferrals.com and, um, you know, lastly, I'd just like to say, you know, you've just got to really listen to your inner investor. And, you know, I'm about to ask what, um, you know, what, what are the first steps that we can take to get started? And so I just made a takeaway list. And, you know, Definitely, if you haven't pulled your credit lately, I would go to Equifax.com and pull a tri-merge, um, you know, one of the three credit reports, because here's the thing, y'all, there's so much hacking going on out there that a lot of times you haven't even applied for credit, used credit. I mean, nothing, you've done nothing wrong, but all of a sudden you see that you've got, you know, a 620 credit score because somebody else has been applying for credit everywhere from you or, you know, bounce to check to Domino's Pizza, you know, that's in your name or whatever. And so um, just log on, get your three bureau credit report so you can be sure that all of them are, are high scores over 700 because it'll make your mortgages cheaper. Uh, I mean, a lot cheaper. It's time for us to think about what do we have? Do we have time or do we have money? Okay, because... You know, everyone has one of these. I mean, everyone has one of these. And so if you've got time, then who do you know with money who trust your work ethic? And if you don't know, then, then go offer to do a home project at somebody's house or outside. Offer to do something for free and take before and after pictures and send it to them. <laughs> I, I, I mean, because we can all do something. If you if you are a person that has time, but you don't have much money, you know, to, to get started, do you find it shocking that there are a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people that have money that would love to make more, you know, than 0 0.000125? and a CD in a bank. I mean, but do you find it shocking that you didn't need money this whole time to do this? I think a lot of people are are trapped in this, this, well, I just didn't know, you know, which is why I'm so happy that they, that everybody came to class today, because, you know, even if you don't do this this week or next month, why wouldn't we want people paying houses off for us? If, it, if, if we get, if all we have to do is put down 5% and we get 3% back plus a month and a half of 
that. So it's like we get 4% back depending on how much we paid. Like, why wouldn't we want people to do that for us? Why, why are we not allowing people to pay our homes off that are dying to pay them off for us? Are you ready to dive in? Yeah, really. If, um, if not, make a plan over the next 90 days to get ready. And, you know, I'm just saying on here, it's just, you know, you and your family are worth it because, because you are. And you know what? What's the worst thing that, that can happen? Let's say, you know, number one, if you're buying a house for $300,000 or less, that house is, that home price is going to be definitely higher and it has more room to increase than say a house if you bought it for 550 or 600. You know, so even when home prices fall, which I do believe that they will just, you know, based on what we talked about earlier, but how far are they going to fall? You, you know what I mean? Maybe not that far because we're so short on inventory. Maybe the inventory is going to be just sucked up just like that. Because remember, the last time everybody went into short sale because they owed more on the house than um, than they could sell the house for. That's not the case this time. Don't Y'all, take- thank you for coming. I'm thank so you. glad you came. Yeah, you. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I'm yeah, ready to get some homes. Great thank- class, Michelle. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for thank coming. Michelle.